Welcome to this revision blast for AQA GCSE Geography, looking at climate change, which is part of the Paper 1 Natural Hazards Unit. We are going to run through a number of activities to test your knowledge and recall of this important topic. So let's get started. We're going to kick off proceedings with a round of altered vowels. Each of the key phrases that you will see on the screen have had the vowels changed to an alternative. Can you work each of the key phrases linked to climate change out? Let's go. So our first one is on the screen already for you. We're going to leave it up for a few moments and then we will, re we will reveal the answer. Have you worked it out? Let's reveal. It is the quaternary period, and it's a period covering the last 2.8 million years, characterised by cycles of glacial and interglacial periods. So here is number two. We'll leave it up for a few moments. Let's reveal. It is rising sea levels. So lots of areas across the world are at risk of rising sea levels, particularly low lying countries such as Bangladesh and the Maldives. A major, major impact of climate change. So we have a slightly trickier one on the screen now. So can we work this one out? We'll just give you a moment and then we will reveal. Do you have this one? Let's reveal. It is eccentricity. Serbian geophysicist Milanovic studied the Earth's orbit and spotted three different cycles which he claimed to affect global climate. And we know these as Milanovic cycles. They affect the timings and seasons of the Earth's climate. Firstly, we have eccentricity, which describes the orbital path, which changes from being almost circular to slightly elliptical. And a complete cycle of this takes roughly 100,000 years, which coincides with alternating glacial and interglacial periods. So our fourth altered valve is on the screen. Can we work this one out? Let's reveal. It is axial tilt. Now, this is another one of Milanovic's cycles. We know that the Earth spins on an axis and this axis is tilted. It's tilted at 23.5 degrees. But over 41,000 years, roughly, it will move back and forth between 21.5 and 24.5 degrees. And this will affect the climate. Right, we'll give you a clue this time. So this one is the third of the Milanovic cycles. Do you recognise this key term? Let's reveal. It is a procession. So this is a natural wobble, which is why some places around the world have very long days or very long nights at certain times of the year. And a wobble cycle takes around 26,000 years. So our sixth altered vowels is on the screen currently. Can you work this one out? Hopefully this one is a slightly easier. Let's reveal. It is solar output. So the presence of sunspots on the sun's earth can affect global temperatures. Sunspots are dark patches that appear from time to time and they increase from a minimum to a maximum over a period of 11 years and we call this a sunspot cycle. When sunspot output is at a maximum, the sun will give off more heat which can make large explosions occur on the surface and it can result in solar flares. When this is at a minimum, this reduced solar output can lead to lower temperatures on Earth. A long periods with very few sunspots are sometimes referred to as little ice ages, where the climate will be much colder with severe winters. Here's our next one. Have you worked this one out? Let's reveal. 
it is volcanic activity. So when volcanoes erupt in an explosive fashion, they send huge amounts of lava, ash, gases and rocks into the atmosphere. This affects the temperature in two ways. Firstly, volcanic ash can block out the sun, which is a short term impact, but it can reduce the Earth's temperatures temporarily. But it can also cause a long term impact. So the sulfur dioxide that is given off can be converted into sulfuric acid, which forms fine droplets, which then reflect the sun's radiation, leading to a drop in temperature, which can last for many years. Now, hopefully we all recognise these as being natural causes of climate change. So here is our final altered valves. Let's reveal. It is the greenhouse effect. We're going to talk about the greenhouse effect in our next activity. Well done if you got all of those correct. Okay, so we're gonna have a round of connection spinner now and we're gonna have a think about the greenhouse gases that lead to the greenhouse effect. Okay, on the screen you have a number of sources of greenhouse gases. So we have car exhaust, agricultural fertilizers, decaying organic matter, burning biomass for energy, sewage treatment, and deforestation and wood burning. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set off the spinner. When the spinner lands on one of these six, we want you to try and work out which greenhouse gas is given off by that activity. So let's start the spinner. Okay, our first one is deforestation and wood burning. Just going to give you a moment to have a think about what greenhouse gas is given off by this activity. Let's reveal. It is CO2, so carbon dioxide. So in recent years, we've seen a huge increase in the levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, and it accounts for around about 60% of the enhanced greenhouse effect, which we will talk about in a minute. Global concentration of CO2 has increased by 30% since 1850, and that's caused by burning fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas in industry to generate electricity or to power vehicles, which all release huge amounts of CO2, but deforestation is also responsible. So when trees are cut down to clear land for economic activity, they are often burned, which gives off lots of CO2. They also store carbon. So once they are felled, this stored carbon is no longer stored and is released back into the atmosphere. Okay, let's have another go. Okay, so we've landed on burning biomass for energy. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to try and work out which greenhouse gas is given off here. Let's reveal. It is methane. So methane is really effective at absorbing heat. And as a result, it accounts for around about 20% of the enhanced greenhouse effect and its heating of the earth. Now, it is released into the atmosphere in many different ways. It's released when organic matter rots down in landfill sites or on compost heap. It's given off when we burn biomass for energy. But one of the biggest causes is through agriculture. So, for example, livestock, particularly cattle, um, but also rice farming as well. Okay, we're going to have a final spin. Okay, so we've got agricultural fertilisers. So which greenhouse gas are we talking about here? Let's reveal. It is nitrous oxide. So these are really efficient at trapping heat and tiny concentrations in the atmosphere are actually up to 300 times more effective at capturing heat and CO2. 
Now, nitrous oxides are released in lots of different ac economic activities, such as some power stations producing electricity. They are released from fertilizers that are used to improve crop yields in farming, and they are also given off from sewage treatment plants, as well as being one of the many toxins that we find in vehicle exhausts. Again, well done if you managed to collect to get those three correct. Our next activity is chains of analysis. So we're going to show you five sentences which are scrambled up. We want you to rearrange them to try and form a chain of analysis to explain the greenhouse effect. So this time you might want to pause the video to give yourself a little bit more time. So let's have a look at the sentences on the screen. We now have an enhanced greenhouse effect where too much heat is being trapped in leading to climate change. Many human activities cause greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane to be released into the atmosphere. We call the heat given off by the Earth's surface long wave radiation. These form a blanket within the atmosphere that traps this long wave radiation heat. And right at the bottom we have the atmosphere allows most solar radiation to pass through the atmosphere to warm up the Earth's surface. This is short wave radiation. So if you can pause the video to give yourselves a few moments to try and work out the order of these, you might want to note them down on a piece of paper. Pause the video now if you haven't already done so. OK, let's reveal the answer. So the correct answer is, or the correct order, is the Earth's atmosphere allows most solar radiation to pass through the atmosphere to warm up the Earth's surface. This is short wave radiation. We call the heat given off by the Earth's surface long wave radiation. Many human activities cause greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane to be released into the atmosphere. These form a blanket within the atmosphere that traps this long wave radiation heat. We now have an enhanced greenhouse effect where too much heat is being trapped in, leading to climate change. Again, if you got those correct, well done. So we have another round of Connection Spinner. This time we're looking at impacts of climate change. So we have six categories on the screen this time, health, tourism, crop yield, flood risks, fishing and coral reefs. Let's set the spinner. So what we want you to do this time is have a think about how each one of these will be impacted by climate change. So we've landed on coral reefs, how are coral reefs going to be impacted by climate change? If you need to pause the video to give your yourself a bit of time to think, please do. Let's reveal the answer. So coral reefs such as a Great Barrier Reef could see biodiversity loss and warmer, more acidic water could cause coral bleaching. So coral bleaching is where the coral looks white. It's pretty much died off. Let's spin again. Okay, so we've landed on health this time. So I'm going to give you a few moments to have a think about the impacts of climate change on people's health. So pause the video if you need to. Let's reveal the answer. So in Europe, more heat waves can increase deaths, but deaths related to colder weather may also decrease. In South East Africa, for example, malaria might increase in hot, humid regions that remain hotter for longer in the year. And there are all sorts of other impacts of climate change um, in terms of health that you can think about also. Okay, let's have another spin. Okay, so we've landed on tourism this time. So again, give yourself a few more moments if you need to by pausing the video. So what 
could be potential impacts of climate change on tourism. Let's reveal. So places that are um, that currently operate as ski resorts, such as those in the Alps, might have to close or they might have much shorter seasons as there will be less snow. Obviously, that can impact on the economy. And you've also got tourism dependent places like the Maldives, which may be underwater, obviously will have a huge impact on the way people earn their money there. OK, we have one more. So where are we going to land this time? fishing. So what would be the impacts of climate change on fishing across the globe? Again, if you need a little bit more time to have a think, please do. Please pause the video. Right, let's reveal the answer. So fishing could decline in areas like the lower Mekong Delta, which is in Southeast Asia, that would affect 40 million people that rely on that river. And that would be because of the reduced water flow and the sea level rise, which would change the quality of the water. And obviously there are other areas around the world that would be affected too. Well done if you came up with some of those impacts. So we're going to have another round of altered vowels. We should know the score this time. So each of the vowels has been changed to a different one. So you've just got to try and recognise the words on the screen. Again, all linked to climate change. So this is a nice, easy one, hopefully. Let's reveal. It is a fossil fuel. So fossil fuels are things like coal, oil and gas. They're formed over millions of years under pressure and they have to be burned to get to release the energy. When we burn them, they give off lots of carbon dioxide. And as a global population, we are trying to move away from their usage. So our next one is currently up on the screen. We'll leave it there for a few moments for you to try and work out. The first word should be quite easy. Maybe the second one's a little bit more tricky. Have you spotted it? Let's reveal. It is carbon capture. So there is lots and lots of technological advancement in how we can store carbon dioxide and how we can replicate the way that Earth stores carbon dioxide. So particularly underground in rock formations and in the ocean. And we call this carbon capture and storage. And it uses technology to capture CO2 produced from the use of fossil fuels in electricity generation and industrial processes. And it is possible to capture around 80 to 90% of that CO2 that would otherwise enter the atmosphere. And once it is captured, the carbon gas is compressed and transported by pipeline to an injection well and is injected as a liquid into the ground to be stored in suitable geological reservoirs. And the only issue is, obviously, it is really expensive to do. Okay, our next altered valves is on the screen. I think this one looks a bit trickier than it actually is. Have we spotted it yet? Let's reveal. It is afforestation, so simply planting trees. We've already said that deforestation is a huge driver of climate change. Um, by planting far more trees, we can see a huge reduction in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere because trees act as carbon sinks and they remove CO2 through photosynthesis. They also release moisture into the atmosphere, which has a cooling effect, producing more cloud, therefore reducing incoming solar radiation. So that is a good thing also. So forests, uh, plantation forests can actually absorb CO2 at a faster rate than natural forests, and they do this effectively for up to 50 years. Tree planting projects are really established across many parts of the world. And of course, there are lots of other benefits of them, such as increasing biodiversity and reducing the risk of deforestation. For example, the Great Green Wall that has been planted right across the Sahel region in Northern Africa. So number four is on the screen. What do we think this one might be? So this is to do with mitigation, so reducing the risk of climate change and is really important. Let's reveal. 
It is the Paris Agreement of 2015. So at the Paris COP summit, lots of agreements were made about how to globally fight climate change. So what they, there were a number of things, including to peak greenhouse gas emissions as soon as possible and to achieve a balance between sources and sinks of greenhouse gases in the second half of this century to keep the global temperature increase below uh, two degrees, but also limit this to 1.5 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Now, the idea here is that the there will be damage at uh, 1.5 degrees, but it will be much easier to manage than what we're currently on track with. Another part of it was to review progress every five years and to invest $100 billion a year to support climate change in initiatives in developing countries. Um, this was supposed to be in place by 2020. Unfortunately, it was not. The COP26 summit of last year played quite an important role in that, as did COP27 this year. This year, countries finally agreed to contribute towards low-income countries to help them fight climate change. And our last altered vowels is on the screen. It hopefully is a nice, easy one. Even if you don't need, know the term, it's one that's quite easy to guess just because that's a lack of letters on the screen. Let's reveal. It is net zero. The idea of balancing it out. So we're not giving off more than we're taking in. Now, this balance is known as net zero. And you would have heard a lot about it if you listen to any reports on on things like the COP summits that we've seen over the last couple of years. Right, we're going to move on to a game of categorise. So you've got 60 seconds to separate the key phrases into these two categories, mitigation strategies and adaptation strategies. So let's just remind ourselves what they are. Mitigation means that you're reducing or you're preventing the greenhouse gas emissions which cause climate change. These strategies can be on a global, national or local scale and adaptation is responding to the impacts of climate change and trying to make the populations affected less vulnerable. And these tend to be more on a local scale. So we're going to set off the timer for 60 seconds. You have got to get these into the correct category. So again, you might want a piece of paper so you can note these down. Let's go. Right, how did you get on? Are you feeling confident that you've got these in the right category? Let's have a look at the answers. Okay, so for mitigation strategies, we've got carbon capture from fossil fuel power stations, enhancing natural carbon sinks, international agreement for carbon reduction, and electrical vehicles and charging points. For our adaptation strategies, we've got building homes that are raised off the ground, building seawalls and flood barriers, changing to drought resistant crops and having more air conditioning in homes. So we're going to move on to amend the gap activity now. So you're going to see a piece of text that has got missing words. And the question the text is answering is why do LICs and NEEs struggle to manage the impacts of climate change? So let's have a look at that text now. So mend the gap. People living in LICs and NEEs often struggle to have a decent quality of life, particularly in terms of food and something supply. An increase in temperatures and more frequent something means that there will be less something water, but also less water for irrigation. Less irrigation means that 
something may fail, meaning that people will have less to eat and may lead to famine. This may lead to more people becoming sick and not being able to something, so therefore the quality of life becomes worse for those already struggling. So pause the video if you need to for a moment or two to try and work out what those gaps are. Pause the video now, restart when you're ready. Okay, have you worked them out? Let's reveal the answers. Our first gap was water supply. An increase in temperatures will, and more frequent droughts mean there'll be less drinking water, but also less water for irrigation. Less irrigation means that crops may fail. And if we scoot down to the bottom, so we're going to have people becoming sick and not being able to work. Well done if you got those all correct. We're going to end this revision blast with a quick go at multiple choice questions. Obviously, these are an important part of your exam, so it's good to get a bit of practice in with these. So our first question, our main impact of sea level rise is A, change levels of precipitation, B, increased river flooding, C, increased surface runoff from rivers, and D, increased coastal flooding. Let's reveal. It is increased coastal flooding. Question two. A consequence of rising sea temperature is A, fewer tropical storms, B, increasing fish populations, C, more pollution, D, coral bleaching. What do we think? Let's reveal the answer. It is coral bleaching. Question three. Which one of the following is not an impact of decreasing crop yields? Increasing population density for A, B, malnutrition, C, death, D, famine. Let's reveal. It is A, increased population density. Question four. Which one of these is not a carbon mitigation strategy? A, carbon capture storage. B, afforestation. C, developing renewable energy sources. And D, building coastal defences. Let's reveal. It is building coastal defences. So this is a response and adaptation. Five, which one of the following is a renewable source of energy? A, coal, B, wind power, C, oil, D, gas. Let's reveal. It is wind power, so it's not going to run out and is much better for the environment. Six, which of the following is not an adaptation strategy to deal with rising sea levels? A, developing flood warding systems. B, building coastal defences, C, developing renewable energy, and D, building levees at the coast. So which one is not an adaptation strategy? Let's reveal the answer. It is C. So C is a mitigation strategy. So the idea here that if we use more renewable energy, then we will give off less CO2 in the first place. Number seven, one way in which farming practices can adapt to climate change is by A, signing international agreements, B, developing new crop varieties more resistant to dry weather, C, increasing the planting of crops, D, importing more crops from overseas. So which one do we think is the correct answer? Have you worked it out? Let's reveal. It is B, developing new crop varieties that are more resistant to drier weather. And our final question is, which one of the following is not an effective method to conserve water? A, building more dams. B, harvesting rainwater. C, installing water meters. And D, installing swimming pool covers to reduce evaporation. 
Let me just give you a moment. Right, let's reveal the answer. It is building more dams. That concludes our revision blast for climate change. Um, please have a look at the playlist for other revision blasts covering all the other topics in the AQA geography specification. And of course, good luck.